Hello everyone, how we doing? Welcome to the second episode of Pitch and Talk podcast. Today I am joined by Welsh filmmaker Alan Rees Morgan. Alan has written and directed many short films that have won awards at prestigious film festivals and he loves to write films that are more on the fun side. He has been directing short films and commercials for over 10 years. In this podcast we talk about his recent works, Kind Regards and Collection Only that were shortlisted for Pigeon Laughs Festival and the intentions he set out in order to create these very funny short films. Me and Alan also talk about how to balance a career in filmmaking, such as the importance of building your portfolio, generating ideas for your own projects, and we even discuss the importance of finding the best people to support your creative goals. It's a fun one and you will enjoy listening to Alan. Tomai! Here for the chair from Free Cycle. She's a little old woman. If it came to it, I would spark her out. I would punch her out of those little tiny shoes. We're rolling. Cool. <laughs> this is fun. Um, Alan Rees Morgan. I'm, am I pronouncing that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, you're not actually. No, it's Alan Rees Morgan. But Morgan. Yeah, yeah. So you can just, you just say Alan. It's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely fine. But yeah, it, the Welsh pr- pronunciation is Alan Rees Morgan. Ah, uh, but is there Morgan English? Yeah, yeah. I, I, in, I, I sort of just let it go. Yeah. So on you jobs, let it go. on jobs, I usually say, "Oh, it's Alan, Alan, or Alan, Alan Morgan." Or something. Yeah, yeah. I do the exactly the same with my name because I say, "Oh, my name is Joseph Fortuna." And people go like, "How do how do you say like like Jose? And they go, "Chasse." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I go, "Yeah, yeah, that's that's that's." It's it. just easier, isn't it? So uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's easier than having to explain how to pronounce it. Yeah. And take like waste five minutes doing that. So Absolutely. You just want to. You might as well just get on with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I wanted for so for, for people that um, that have never seen your your, your work, and um, I I wanted to just uh, touch base briefly on on your connection to to Wales because you are a South Wales based, yeah, born yeah. and bred. Am, am yeah, I yeah, that? that's right. Yeah, yeah, mm. Cardiff, Cardiff, Cardiff. Oh. Yeah, so I, I grew up in Cardiff. Right. Uh, my parents are both from West Wales, so mm-hmm. um, I've got that side as well. But yeah, born and bred in Cardiff. Born and bred Went in to a Cardiff. Welsh speaking school, so. Yeah. yeah and have, have you what's your uh did you go to, to university here as well i went to uni in newport uni so that's newport what uni, Univers- yeah. university of south wales is mm-hmm. called now mm-hmm. so um i think it merged with glamorgan uni so i came to new i went to newport uni in 20 no 2007 2007 graduated yeah. in 2010 so i feel proper old now <laughs> proper proper old and and you, did you study film and film and video is called yeah film so and it, was, video. it focused more on fiction filmmaking yeah um, I tried to switch actually in the first year to documentary, but they didn't let me in. Uh, so yeah, I just stayed on the fiction filmmaking course. I specialized right. in sound recording. And then, um, and then yeah, when I left uni then, I just focused more on the directing and that's, yeah, that's, that was my path really. So like graduating from university, you wanted to be a, a, a director, a film director? Yeah, I've, was... I've always wanted to direct, but in uni I sort of just, I just focused on sound. I sort of sat in the background, sort of watched everyone else, which is a good way in the because you just saw everyone else make the mistakes. Yeah, and then yeah, when, yeah. That's the, that was my best way of dealing with it because I was like, yeah, I just thought, yeah, I learned a lot with, from that. And then when I left uni, then I, yeah, I just got a lot more confidence, right? Like, more, more confidence in my own ideas and um, got it. Yeah, and when that confidence came, then I just sort of built and built and like worked with more actors, tried to right. organize your own shoots. Yeah, and, yeah, it just snowballed then and then. Yeah, you just gain more confidence the more and more stuff you make. Definitely, so, yeah. definitely. Um, let's l- let's talk about your two shortlisted uh, short films that you um, submitted to Pigeon Laughs Festival. First of all, congratulations as oh, well. Cheers, you man. Know, Thank you. Collection only and uh, kind regards. Um, I w- you know th- these are two very different shorts, isn't it? Like those are like completely different. Um, I I wanted to to ask you, like, did you have different goals when making either one of them well like what were your goals when you when you first made i i assume that you did first kind regards am, am yeah, i guessing yeah, that right, right yeah. yeah cool yeah the goal was so what i usually do like kind regards is one of those shorts you can make you can film in a day and then edit it in like a month so it's like one of those right. quick turnaround shorts mm-hmm. and the intention with that was just to put it out on youtube Definitely. get a lot of viewerships and then it just sort of really spoke to how i felt at the time so yeah 
I was like sort of exercising all my demons of all these passive aggressive clients I was dealing with. So I was just like, <laughs> oh, the best way to do this is just sort of make a film, get all of that frustration out. And um, and yeah, when it, when it came out, people a lot of people were saying like they could they could sort of relate to it. So yeah, oh, so that, that's one of those reactive shorts where in the moment you're just like, oh, I may as well make this. It won't take me long. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yeah it doesn't cost much money at all. I think all in it was like two hundred pounds to make the short. Okay. So from beginning to end, that's all it cost. Yeah. Um, and it's such a short. I think it's like under three minutes, something like that. Just yeah, it's like just just under three. Yeah. 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 I think it works. It's like you know it's i you know you call it a short film it's you know you could say you know it's a sketch but it's so well made that you have to like it's a short film and but yeah, it's yeah. it's still like it's so funny and it's on it's on youtube isn't it it's on youtube yeah, yeah. i urge everyone to go and to go and see kind of regards on on youtube by alan reese morgan yeah Morgan. I'm sorry. yeah that's what i know he's like <laughs> yeah i made it with um one of my best mates is old paul so um right. he shot it and did all of the amazing looking email stuff right, so right, right. all of that mm -hmm. so yeah he brings a lot to it as well Oh, great. And um, w what about uh, collection only? Now, collection only, that's, I assume you took a different approach, right? I, you know, you did yeah. you shoot that in a day? I, I, would, I would guess not. Oh, no, no. That was like, that was done all, all proper. So that had a much yeah. bigger budget. And um, yeah, so I, I got a producer for that. Mm -hmm. Pre-production was a long time. Right. I wrote it in lockdown. So mm. It was a bit up in the air whether I could film it or not because um, obviously crews weren't happening. Like sort of crewed up productions were a lot right. harder to do. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, so that yeah that took a long time to make. I think it was like a year until we actually shot. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then after that, the edit took a long time as well. I think I was just trying to do everything professionally because I saw the show as a way to sort of progress and sort of almost like a calling card. Yeah. So and I wanted to do everything properly, so get a proper crew in. And like, yeah, that was the intention. So it, it was meant as a short to sort of move on to bigger stuff. Right. And I wanted to do something that was a lot of fun that the crew would have fun with as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, because I, yeah, and comedy is the best way to do. That, I think like it's one of my favorite genres. Mm -hmm. And combining horror and comedy. Yeah. Yeah, it was a bit of a no-brainer. It's so um, my two favorites. Yeah, it's um, I it's it's a hard to to explain the the short like conceptually because it's you know it's proper scary. You know what I mean? Like there's oh, got yeah, some yeah. like proper oh, good then, yeah. creepy like tension. You know, I think you build up tension really well yeah. in in the short, and then you break that sometime with like this deadpan yeah yeah uh, humor. Yeah, it's almost playing on those cliches from classic horrors. Yeah, Cause, yeah, Because yeah. I'm such a big horror fan, it was sort of... Oh, are you? Yeah, a massive horror fan, so... What are sort of your, your references in, in horror? Like, I love Hitchcock. I love, like, mm. the horrors like The Conjuring and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I love Evil Dead. So, I didn't think I'd ripped Evil Dead off that much, but then when I, I watched <laughs> Evil Dead again the other day, the originals, right. and I was like, oh, fuck, I've actually, like, ripped quite a lot of it off. But, yeah. But, yeah, I think I just subconsciously, subconsciously did that. Um, but yeah, I'm a big horror fan. Um, Do you like the The Shining? Oh, Shining, yeah, Shining, big, like a classic. It? Yeah, I've gone blank now. Yeah, the, yeah, The Conjuring, Shining. Uh, I love Barbarian, which came out recently. Uh, Have you seen Barbarian? No, no. Oh, it's great. It's really good. It's about a girl who goes to an Airbnb and there's already a guy there. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it's it's a really unpredictable horror. It's, it's really good. Definitely worth a watch. Yeah. And talk to me as well. I love that as well. Talk to me. Yeah. That one I, I heard about. Yes. Yeah, that was amazing. Oh, it's um, it's such um, I you know we both know Stefan Evans. You know Stefan Evans is a yeah, brilliant yeah, stand-up yeah. comedian. Uh, funny guy. Yeah, proper funny guy. Uh, from from Wales as well, and um, he, he has such a a strong part. You know, he's so funny. He does such a an, a great job. And one thing that I I noticed when rewatching the the short, there are some like references to like wealth mythology. Is that is that right? Yeah, it was, it's not like wealth mythology. It's like um, so obviously Wales is a really strong like coal mining co mm -hmm. coal mining background. Yeah. Um, so my great grandfather was a coal miner. Right. Um, so he used to tell us stories about what it was like down there. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just added in like a, a, a mythological element, so a, a demon who lived deep in the coal mines and yeah. it sort of played on like because the coal miners are all the the poorest in society mm -hmm. and it was sort of like him giving them a deal to, for a better life as long as he could uh, yeah sort of possess you for the rest of your life yeah so that type of thing oh yeah that's that's but it's like 
but it's like yeah i made it all up but, you, it's, yeah, oh, but, but it, was okay. ba- it was based on like a welsh history thing oh amazing yeah. well what, what was like the um, what was he like your inspiration for for writing the the short so the short is about a guy that you know is going to buy a chair from like these websites yeah. you know he's going to pick up and comes across this old lady and it goes on from there right yeah that's right yeah so, and we well, yeah go on yeah it was like so i was writing a, a another short at the time and i was in like a coffee shop somewhere i can't remember where and i remember like um this short I was writing was really shit. It was, it was a comedy as well, and I just couldn't get it to work. <laughs> I remember looking up at a notice board, and there was like a really shit chair f- advertised, saying like, but they were advertising to sell it for like 50 quid, and it was the most depressing, tragic chair I've ever seen. <laughs> and then, yeah, I looked at that, and I was like, oh, like, um, I wonder who'd actually be selling that. And I started to think of a story from that then. And, uh. um, and my best mate, Tom, who's in the film as well, he's right. the other guy who's not Steph. Yeah. Um, we've got like a married couple sort of relationship so I was okay. like, I'll, I'll put that into the story as well that sort of element that almost like in bruges yeah yes, yeah so yes, i wanted yes, to bring yes. that sort of bickering two guys yes. bickering. they're so close they know each other so well that they, they just bicker yeah um, i wanted to bring that into like a horror element and they're picking up the chair and then, yeah it just came really naturally then it felt it was such an easy one to write because it was it was really fun to write and I just I was just sort of drawing off my own experience mm-hmm. with my best mates. That's yeah, that's so interesting. So it basically came from a failed idea from a, a different shot that you were writing. Yeah, it was. It wasn't related at all. It wasn't I remember just being so frustrated. I was at a point because sometimes you write a script, mm-hmm. you just have to give it up because you're like, I don't know where it's going. <laughs> like, it's not going to work. It's not worth anybody's time. I was sort of at that point in that coffee shop, and I just happened to see this notice, and I was like, oh, I've got to. Yeah, th- that's a much better idea. And it was something I was a lot more excited about. Uh, and how long d- did it take you to to write the, the short? Oh, I think I wrote it in like three days. But in then three? I was oh, okay. yeah, but I redrafted it over like a few weeks yeah. and stuff. Because um, I wrote it during COVID, so I had a lot of free time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just saw it. T- it took a w- it, yeah, and I was redrafting for ages. And like I said, pre-production was a long time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it sort of stays pretty true to what it is now. Mm-hmm. I just sort of changed details here and there. I think it was a bit long originally as well. Okay, yeah. we were we were talking earlier uh, before we we start recording, just kind of how like balancing a career in in, in filmmaking, uh, trying to making it happen on, on other fronts, so you can like fuel your own yeah, yeah. creativity in other avenues. How have you been balancing that? You know, for for other people that are, like listening and you know they finding it in a similar position or like. How do you how how have you been based on on your experience? Yeah, the hard thing is when you want to make films, especially fiction, is yeah, you, it's you have to pay the bills as well. Of and course, a lot of the times, that op- those opportunities in film aren't there. Yeah. So yeah, my way of dealing with that was I sort of went freelance and I started making like it started off as corporate videos, so making like interview based stuff. Yeah. And it built up a better clients, sort of better money. Mm-hmm. And I try and balance that with writing and making my own stuff, and right. then gradually trying to move on to stuff more like tv stuff and the goal is to write, to make my own feature uh so i'll i'm always working towards that yeah um but yes yeah, it's, it's a hard game proper hard game so like yeah you've got to sort of find a way to like i said pay those bills while you're of course sort of trying to build up that ladder yeah especially so if, especially if you're not doing like the traditional way of becoming a runner and you work away all the all the way up over 10 years or something yeah. so and, and and you started you were saying you started in documentary filmmaking uh no no i so i i've always been film film but i film. remember in my second year of uni i was i almost switched to documentary oh um, i see i see yeah but i didn't in the end but a lot oh. of the stuff i do is documentary sort of style now so it's yeah interviewing real, real people mm-hmm. that sort of style and and yeah it's interesting it's interesting how you're saying that like you want to build up to a like a feature that's like that's the goal yeah and I assume that's like a lot of your peers have also a similar goal that like, oh, let's make this three minute that eventually evolves into a 10 minute, which eventually evolves into maybe like a half an hour sort of long, um, you know, short. And then the goal is to, you know, raise funds to do an hour and a half or, you know, something like like that. um, kind of don't know what, what was the question that I was, that, that was going to ask. Oh, yes. It's it's kind of like, you know, it's um in, in, in some ways, I think, you know, like being, being a filmmaker is kind of like trying to make it as a comedian in a sense, like you first 
you do your first five minutes then you evolve into 10 then you want to do half an yeah, hour yeah. eventually to get into the to that to that one hour and it's um yeah it's it, it's it, it's a challenge and do, do you think like the current state of of the industry is kind of helping to reach you to that goal oh, i don't know that's, that's a tough one yeah that's a hard one isn't it yeah yeah yes. um yeah i don't even know it, yeah it's a really hard one i don't really know what the industry is at the moment it's sort of evolving yeah. so quickly and i think there's a lot of anxiety with people about how it's going um so yeah my my goal is just to wait it out see what happens just to um, wait it out yeah yeah and keep and keep um like putting you, your stuff out there yeah you know? yeah 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 um well like you said it's like it's like being a comedian you've got to build up like comedians have to do about 100 shows they say is it um until you get More. until you get good or something yeah. Or, yeah yeah i think it's the same with film really you have to build that experience and it's a confidence thing as well mm -hmm. um and yeah that's that's why i've done all these shorts of years i've done about yeah, it's close to about 15 shorts now. Yeah. So, yeah, that's all just part of my journey. Sort Definitely. Of learning, learning what I need to learn to sort of make it to where I want to be. An another thing that, I, that I've that i noticed, like, the more that I that I watched um, shorts, like the one that you, you, you made, um, but I, I noticed that, like, crew made such a, you know, having the right people picking the right guy to produce, the right guy to you know be the director of photography you know the, the right cast as well yeah yeah it's it's so important like how have you been finding th these people to to come and help you what's sort of been your relationships to you know forge the relationships with you with your friends you know because we know sometimes you know you have to pull out a favor here pull out a favor there and you know yeah. asking people so how do you like make it happen in in that sense yeah so i remember casting wise um, I needed to find, like, I had a very specific idea what I wanted to get for who you mentioned earlier, Steph's yes. character. Yeah, yeah. And I remember seeing Steph in a stand-up show in Hot, Hot Water Comedy, is that, is that what it's called, in Liverpool? Yeah, yeah, Hot yeah, Water Comedy. Yeah, I remember seeing him on a show yeah, yeah. on that on YouTube. Mm -hmm. and I remember his character was exactly what I wanted. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that made my job easier. So I got Steph in that way. Mm -hmm. And then all the who played the old woman, um, I'd seen her in some stuff, some films. Just right. got in touch with the agent mm -hmm. and then... Yeah, she was really keen from the off, so that was good. Fantastic. And then, um, like I said, my best mate is the other actor. Um, but yeah, it's, it's always interesting working with your, your best mates because you have that sort of shorthand. You don't mm -hmm. sort of uh, skirt around issues, especially on set, if you have, have, a, have a problem with something. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I had that with him. Um, and yeah, it's the rest of the crew, I just sort of, I found out about them, sort of. I'd been watching them for a while, got, been in touch, said I wanted to work with them in the future. So I... All the crew I'd sort of done my research about, and I, I knew they'd be the right people for the job. Mm -hmm. And and the budget for the film was, I basically saved up for that over. I think I saved up over about a year to make it, so I completely wow. funded it myself. So um, I took on loads of jobs on weekends to sort of pay for it. So all mm -hmm. the money I got on the weekend jobs, I just put towards the short. Right. So yeah, yeah, and that was and that was that. It's um... and a producer's always great because they sort of. They can handle all that. It's almost like handling all that boring admin stuff that you don't. The want bureaucracy, to deal with. Yeah, isn't yeah, it? all that yeah. stuff and all the awkward questions they deal with. Yeah, um, yeah. Producers are so key, and but they're like gold dust. Gold <laughs> dust. So I was just lucky to find one. Oh, it's yeah. so man. It's it's um it's all credit to you, you know, for like spending all all that time. You know, it just shows like how committed I, I suppose you are to like to your own craft and oh, cheers, man, you yeah. know to like you know hustle for five months just to fund an idea that you probably in your brain you're like it could work you know but you know uh, you know as we know these like projects you know when you get at a certain scale you just you're not even aware if you know if will it actually happen yeah you know? you've got to ignore all that i think can it's we just, piece it all together yeah, you've got to put it to the back of your mind you've got to just be convinced that you know you just got to trust like your own sense of humor of your course. own tastes and things and yeah, uh, you get a good idea if, if it's going to do well, like in the script stage as well, mm -hmm. because everyone you send it to, they genuinely give feedback, yeah. saying like, "Oh, they absolutely loved it" or something. Um, and that's this was probably the first script that happened. Like I'd send it to a lot of my mates who were in film, and they'd give me very minimal notes or something. Okay. Um, but they all sort of said like, oh, it's, "It's a lot of fun." It, it, it's, it's, I'm never going to get into like BAFTA with it or anything. But yeah, <laughs> it's like uh, yeah, I just I just set out to make a really fun film that I'd be like happy with at the end and yeah i've definitely done that with amazing yeah amazing well let's let's wrap it up with um do you have any sort of um 
advice for anyone who's listening right now that wants to make their own short and wants to aspire to probably at a level of like collection only or something even yeah, bigger yeah. Uh, what would you say based on your own experience so far i'd say you just gotta be quite reactive with it and um and you have i know it's a cliche people always say go out and make stuff mm -hmm. that, that is that is absolutely true yeah. and they will get better as long as you're consistent with it mm -hmm. um and also be very critical of the work you do make so don't always look at your film and say oh that's that's a finished article i'm i, I should make a feature next you, sh you should on, you should look at every project very critically and say what what works what didn't work um and yeah it's it is it's yeah it is you just got to build, keep building that experience up. Experience is the most important thing, yeah. I think. That's how you get better. Connections as well. Connections, as, you know. yeah. And yeah, and the projects tend to get bigger and bigger. And it, and it's a, it's also okay to go back down to a really small project where you're just working with your best friend or something. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. Like Kind Regards is basically that. So I'd written Collection only before Kind Regards, but oh. I just wanted to stay fresh. I was like, oh, I'll just make this quick short with my mates. I remember and james button was the runner so he's your guest at yes Talks, yeah, isn't he? yeah so yeah he was the runner on that um and it was just the three of us oh i'm paul's wife sorry so it's <laughs> four, four of us yeah um yes yeah, so there's nothing wrong going back down um and yeah i just say keep fresh like keep fresh keep making stuff amazing and yeah hopefully it will all pay off in the end absolutely well listen um how can people find out uh about your work like plug youtube your website like any production companies that you sort of like tend to work with often that people would be interested to reach out if they interested about your work man yeah i'd probably just say just my instagram is probably the best place that's probably the only place i update everything else is just dead i don't really <laughs> don't ever deal with it so yeah it's just instagram i'd say so it's at yeah just alan reese morgan yeah fantastic yeah. amazing dude um thank you very much yeah cheers man thanks for letting in the festival I I, no I, I, I'm, I i'm so excited for people to to see and and to be scared yeah. to the tits and uh, and to oh, laugh cool. yeah hopefully they're scared yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah i came to your festival last year and it's it is a really really good one so, thank you yeah appreciate it